Reading closely and writing to learn. Poetry, poets, and becoming writers. Unit 1, Lesson 2. Guiding questions. These are questions that you'll be thinking about throughout the entire module. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? Today's learning targets. I can get the gist of pages 1 through 5 of Love That Dog. I can explain what Jack understands about poetry. I can identify characteristics of poetry when analyzing the poem, The Red Wheelbarrow. The book that you'll be reading in this module is called Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. While you read, think about the following questions. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? And while you read, take notice of how the book is written and how it might be different than other novels you've read or seen. Follow along with your book if you have it. Sharon Creech, Love That Dog. Dedication. For Sandy and Jack Floyd, Mark and Karen Luthy Benjamin, Louise England, Rob Luthy, all of whom love, love, love their dogs. With special thanks to Walter Dean Myers and to all the poets and Mr. and Ms. Stretchberries who inspire students every day. Page number one, Jack, room 105, Miss Stretchberry, September 13th. I don't want to because boys don't write poetry. Girls do. Page 2. September 21st. I tried. Can't do it. Brains empty. Page 3. September 27th. I don't understand the poem about the red wheelbarrow and the white chickens and why so much depends upon them. If that is a poem about the red wheelbarrow and the white chickens, then any words can be a poem. You've just got to make short lines. Page 4, October 4th. Do you promise not to read it out loud? Do you promise not to put it on the board? Okay, here it is, but I don't like it. So much depends upon a blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road. Page 5, October 10th. What do you mean, why does so much depend upon a blue car? You didn't say before that I had to tell why. The wheelbarrow guy didn't tell why. In your reader's notebook or the workbook that you are given, you'll find a place to write your summary or your gist statements about the book. You'll see in the table on the left-hand side it says dates and pages. Then it says the gist statement and then details from the text where you're going to include two to three details. So September 13th through September 21st, which are found on pages one and two in the book, and then September 27th through October 10th, which are pages three through five in the book. So for pages one and two, the gist is that Jack doesn't want to write poetry. And the way that you can figure this out is by looking at the details from the text. So what does he actually say about poetry? Okay, take a second to look back at those pages. In this part of the book, Jack says, only girls write poetry. And then on the next page, he says, tried, can't do it, brains empty. So those are three details from the text that you can write in this space on your table. In pages three through five, we learn that Jack's been reading some different poetry. And at this point, he thinks that poetry is any words written as short lines. Now I want you to look back on those pages to find evidence from the text to help support that just statement that Jack thinks poetry is any words written as short lines. So looking back, you'll find that he says things like, he doesn't understand why the red wheelbarrow is a poem. And he, he actually writes, any words can be a poem. You've just got to make short lines. Take a moment to make sure these are recorded in your writer's notebook. Pause as needed.
Now that we've completed this activity, I want you to think for a moment. What is Jack's attitude towards poetry? What does he think about it? His attitude is how does he sort of feel and approach poetry? So you need to go back and look at the words that he's actually said or thought or written. Things like he doesn't want to write poetry, only girls write poetry, he tried, he can't do it, he doesn't understand it. And I want you to decide, is it positive or negative, his attitude towards poetry? In the book, we heard a reference made to a poem called The Red Wheelbarrow. This is a poem written by a man named William Carlos Williams, and we're going to listen as he reads his poem out loud. And while you read, think about the following questions. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? And while you read, I want you to take notice of how the poem is written and how it is read. Follow along with your book if you have it. This poem is found at the end of the book. The Red Wheelbarrow. So much depends upon the red wheelbarrow, glazed with rainwater beside the white chicken. The Red Wheelbarrow. So much depends upon the red wheelbarrow, glazed with rainwater beside the white chicken. Now we can compare the two poems. On the left hand side we have the red wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams and we have on the right the blue car which was written by Jack. You notice that the blue car was inspired by the red wheelbarrow that was written by the famous poet William Carlos Williams. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. The blue car. So much depends upon a blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road. So by now you should have noticed some things that they have in common. Both poems have short lines. Neither poem rhymes, so we would write down that they don't rhyme, and they both use vivid words, words like glazed and splattered, that really help create a picture in your mind about what's happening. Now it's time to continue thinking about that big guiding question, what makes a poem a poem? Today we looked at The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams, and we noticed some things about it, and we also noticed how Jack took those things and he wrote his own poem inspired by the Red Wheelbarrow. The first thing that Jack and now we have noticed about poetry is that it has a very certain structure. It's how the poem is organized, what it looks like. And the structure of a poem is that it has lines and the lines are a row with a group of words, kind of like a sentence, but it's a little bit different in poetry and then a stanza, which is a group of lines divided by a space. So kind of like a paragraph, but it's, it's different in poetry. So a stanza is made up of lines, and then there's a space, and then another stanza. Another characteristic of poetry is that it can be free verse. Free verse means it's a poem written with no rhyme and no regular rhythm. So the poems that we just looked at did not rhyme, those are considered free verse poems. And finally, in both poems, we noticed that the poets used words or phrases that helped us sort of imagine what was going on. And so those are words that are called imagery. And they help us see what's going on in the poem using our senses like sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. And in the poems that we read, there were words like glazed, splatter, there were colors mentioned, and so all of those things help us visualize. The, those are vivid words, they create imagery. All right, now at this point, there are some questions I want you to ask yourself, and you can pause the video at any time to give yourself some time to think about responses to these questions. You don't need to record them anywhere, just have those thoughts in your mind. What are your thoughts or feelings about poetry now? Have they changed after reading the book and the poem? Are your thoughts and feelings similar or different from Jack's? 
So again, go ahead and pause the video to think about the answers to these questions. And finally, your next steps, your homework, is to reread pages one through five of Love That Dog and reread the red wheelbarrow. It's good to practice these out loud so that you can practice that fluency, which is reading smoothly without any errors. And you'll notice that when we read poetry, we don't read line by line. You actually read like a sentence through until you see the end of the sentence where there's a period. So you just want to read it really smoothly. Don't stop after every line. And then finally, the last thing that you're going to do is try writing your own poetry. You can use the Red Wheelbarrow as a guide like Jack did. Um, he was inspired by that poem to write his poem, The Red, the Blue Car. So you could choose a different subject and sort of use that um, as a guide to help you write a new poem. Good luck and have fun.